Hi, and welcome to the Truly Kenya podcast. You are either watching us on YouTube, where I hope you like and subscribe, or you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform. Today, I'm having a conversation with Nathan Pell. He's an author and a um, the founder of Pell uh, Ventures. So, Nathan, welcome to the Truly Kenya podcast. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Listen, Nathan just watched me do a effing intro three times. And if anybody knows who has watched this podcast, I hate intros and I hate outros. But I hate outros because I don't like goodbyes. Intros, I just fucking hate. But anyways, Nathan is here and I'm going to perfect that intro before we air this podcast. But welcome, Nathan. Hey, I'm hey, here. How are you? You look great. I'm working on it, you know. Yeah, you look good. Thank you. You look good too. Thank you. Okay, so what I didn't mention, you are the founder of Pale Ventures, which is? A venture capital company. So we invest in brands. We invest in different verticals, like across um, on the continent, in Africa. Um, we just, we just any, any entrepreneur that catches our eyes, we invest in them, or any verticals that catches our eye, we invest in it. How would an entrepreneur catch your eye well it depends how passionate they are if they're passion if they leading with passion mm -hmm. then and we we like the um the space that they're in yeah we'll invest into their projects or um ideas do you have like is there a range like is it um you know whatever i don't know five dollars to do you is there a limit or it just depends on the person the the, the, the need the project so the check size is um, it's case by case, okay. basically. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, some places people want money to, um, capital to scale. Yes. And if we see that it makes sense, then we'll go to a certain level with the, um, with the check size. Okay. So tell me about some of these projects that you have or businesses that you have invested in. So we invested into different brands. Okay. Um, when we first started, we started in the crypto space. So okay. that's what took it off for okay. us. So back in 2016, um, we invested into the blockchain and um, Bitcoin yeah. and Ethereum and those spaces. And we, it was just on, a, just on a whim, on a luck. Okay. And um, things took off from there. And um, I ain't gonna lie, I, I thought I made it. <laughs> okay. I, I, I really did, I, I really did. But um, um, it was very humbling in a sense far as like, what are we gonna do now? And me being a serial entrepreneur from the, you know, for many years, um, I, got, I got obsessed with other people's businesses. I, I love learning about other people's businesses. And I realized um, as a collective, um, I got tired of being that individual always asking mm. for uh, mm. some type of finance to for a company. So what I did is switch it over and I became the VC. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned everything about the VC space. I went back to school to learn more about the VC space. Mm -hmm. And um, we started to invest in other um, companies. I just love business. Business is my thing. Has there been a business that you regretted investing in? Either because of the person, it whatever, it just wasn't a good fit. No, no, no. I think every I think every business invested into mm -hmm. um, it's a learning experience, right? And I f sometimes you got to pay for you got to pay for class, and mm -hmm. I call every experience class. Mm -hmm. So I don't regret anything. And I think moving forward, we learn from those mistakes mm -hmm. or we learn from those experiences to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. So no, I don't regret anything. There's sometimes there's some there's some businesses that I regret not invested into. Okay, tell me one. Um, who came to? Is it, is it, yeah, I was, it's just no, nobody. Come on, there's, I, I don't. Go, I don't even want to put it the out there. But lady, the, no, it, it's just, put it like this. There's a lot of great ideas out there, and there's some businesses that I regret not investing into. Yeah. that I would have been like, you know what? I wish FOMO was there. So nowadays, I have FOMO. So and good ideas is very or unicorns, I would mm -hmm. say, are very hard to come by. But when I see them, I feel it. it's more of a feeling than seeing it mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. And um, you know. Have you come across a business, oh, the idea is great, but I can't stand you? Like the person leading. Do you know what I mean? Just that happens all the time. <laughs> that happens all the time. You know what I mean? Because you, but we're dealing with entrepreneurs. 
you have so many different personalities, right? right? I mean, the world is big, so there's many personalities, mm -hmm. right? And especially with entrepreneurs. For an entrepreneur to get to a certain level, they're going to have some type of kookiness to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it takes a certain type of mindset to 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 get through the noise, to get through all the failure, to get mm -hmm. to... And then when you start to get some type of oxygen, it's going to make you into some type of annoying... You could, sometimes you could be annoying, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Sometimes you could be who you are, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, yes, there are entrepreneurs I've met that I'm like, ugh, but mm -hmm. it just depends. And, it, you know, it, it takes for that entrepreneur... To, to work on themselves to become either likable or to understand mm -hmm. the game a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I would imagine that, like you said, there's so many personalities, um, but an entrepreneur bringing to you their baby, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? You know, so they're emotionally tied to it. And so because of that, I could see sometimes it's hard to take in information that doesn't fit and what you think about your baby, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Your, your, your business, your idea or whatever. Um, and so I could see that being hard. And I, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs are that I know are, they're successful, but they are kind of know-it-alls. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. because that's, like I said, their baby, their thing. And to have someone coming in to say like, Hey, well, you know, maybe you should do this, you should do that. Well, this is my fucking baby. I've right. had her for five years. <laughs> I know, you know what I mean? I know what we need to be doing, but um, I think that, I think it's great. And I think that a lot of things that we do and how we move, period, is on feeling and gut. Mm -hmm. And so I guess it's not surprising that it works. It's true. And I mean, and, and it, go back to what you said, it's about the experience, right? I feel like, listen, even when building a company, you're going to go through trial and error. You're going to have your failures. I mean, the more failures you have, honestly, the the better chance you have at winning mm. because you learn from those failures, right? So even when people that come, and this is this goes for relationships, right? When somebody, yeah. If you come to somebody that's eager, like, oh, my God, it's it's me. I just love you. I, I just want to be with you. I would, oh. you you're the one. I, I'm obsessed with you. Oh. Same thing with business. I, this is my baby. I, 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 I. <laughs> That's not going to work. That shows that you're inexperienced. There's, that means you, you haven't been around the block. You haven't failed enough to know how to present your business or present yourself. Right. So it goes hand in hand. So you're going to meet those type of people and, you know, you just got to know that they're green. Are there a lot green. of people out there dating like that? Like You said what? Are there a lot of people out there that show up like crazy what? eager? Like what that? you you got all you got all type of personalities out here in I'm this world. Saying, people show up eager. People show up. People show up pretending to be somebody they're not. People show. You know up what the they say about that? That when people say, "So what are you looking for?" Uh -huh. You're not supposed to tell them because if I say to you, "I'm looking for someone like super romantic, like very sexual, like um, loves loves to eat chicken," that's who you become. There it is. Whereas if I if you ask me that. And I say to you, just be who you are. Then mm -hmm. I can really find out who you are. Right. You don't like sex. You fucking hate chicken. And you're not compassionate. Do you know what I mean? What, whatever that is. I love chicken, by is. the way. <laughs> 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 um, so, do you know what I mean? So, right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think to... I'm sorry, to, that was just a side note. I have ADD. I do that it's a time. real. It's a real good side note. I mean, it's, it's a very valid point. I think awareness always trumps that right because somebody could come and tell you what they like right it, yeah. it definitely helps out to yeah. determine if this is going to work or not like especially like when you're playing in a championship league right like yeah. and when i say championship league when you're playing with the best of the best mm -hmm. um throwing those cards on the table helps out a lot because you know like this times uh, when i've dated people and instantly i could tell about oh this is not going to work out i'm not looking for that you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, this is not for sure. Yeah, I'm not. This is this is not going to work. I'm not even going to waste my time because when I say the championship league, um, you, you're very. I'm very selfish with my time now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't have time. I don't have time for a lot of mm -hmm. things anymore. As I get older, as I get wiser, mm -hmm. you know what I'm Tell saying? Me the one thing you used to make time for that you no longer have time for when it comes to dating. Um, like, small talk. What? Small talk and also um, <laughs> pretending and also like before, like I said, uh, 
leading with like with sex. You know what I'm saying? Like I I, I don't I, you know what I mean? Like if I I need to know the foundation is there before I have sex with you because I know having sex with someone could change their life in general. What? Like b vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Y y l l okay. Okay. You coming to the table with a lot of confidence. What do you, what do you? Okay. So you're saying first of all, I ain't got time for no small talk. Mm -hmm. And if you have sex with someone, you could really impact the rest of their life. We can impact each other's life, but I can impact, we can impact their lives, yes. Yes. Why were you sent home first on the first episode of Queen's Court? I don't, I don't well, even get it. What? what? Well, 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 we'll get back to that. Yeah, I, let's like get I back said, to that, okay. yeah. Okay, so... That's, okay. A good, that's a good question, guys. <laughs> but, all right, so I would say what I don't have time for, as I've gotten older, I've been married, I was in a long-term marriage, and, you know, now I'm newly divorced, but I was going through my divorce for two years or whatever, so dating and all that kind of stuff, which I love. <laughs> um, I, um, I would say... I don't have a lot of time for bullshit. Like I find it amusing and I find like excuses and all that kind of amusing. But at some point I just get so bored with it that I'm, I'm, I'm over it. Do you right, know what I mean? Right. Like, because I think to present so much bullshit in such like the first couple is just crazy to me. And, but, but, like I said, I do put up with it for a little while because I do find it amusing and I'm such a silly, kind of silly, stupid, but smart person that, you know, like I said, I don't know. And then at some point I just get tired of it and be like, okay, this is not working, mm -hmm. you know? And then they can't understand why it's not working. It ain't working because it ain't working. But um, anyway, so, okay, beside that. All right, so we are in this venture capitalist capitalist world mm -hmm. is that competitive is there is there a lot of people trying to give other people money no not at all okay. i mean so yes how does, and how no. does somebody find you or how does somebody find any venture well capitalist? i don't think necessarily the individual find I mean, unless it's organic right yeah but if i have a company or a, whatever a business mm -hmm. i and i need money mm -hmm. what 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 should i be doing if i can't get on shark tank well, I think you should continue to build that company, build that company with passion and not necessarily focus on the money. Work with what you got. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? I think the uniqueness in business building is working with what you have mm -hmm. and then building on top of that. Right. And then presenting it or eventually finding someone um, to to um, to invest into your company. But I would say work with what you have, because usually good businesses um, it ciphers amongst, you know what I mean? I know, I know what businesses is going on. And if somebody comes with a unique business and I'm like a unique business model, or a unique business, then I'd be like, all right, cool. And it's just them it's the individual themselves. Like if they, if their personality, if their passion, like I said, a lot of, a lot of people start businesses with no passion. They, they start businesses chasing money. And chasing money is not going to have mm -hmm. allow you to have a good man. You could do anything for money. People have to understand that. You can do anything for money. However, to sustain in this business environment, in this world, to, to become successful, you have to have passion because passion is going to lead you to get through the bad times. See, when you're chasing, a, when you're chasing money, mm -hmm. as soon as it gets rough, you're going to give up. That's, that's point blank. I've seen it thousands of times. As soon as it get rough, as soon as it get a little rough, it's like, ah, I'm over it. Mm -hmm. I want to go into the next business. Now I want to do trucking. Now I want to be an uh, event space. Mm -hmm. Now I want to start a credit repair business. <laughs> now I want to, now I want to, hey, you ever heard about, uh, whatchamacallit? I want to start that. I'm going to try Ubering. I'm going to start a Turo <laughs> business. You go through all these phases and then it's like, you, you know why you're going through so many phases? Because you're passionate. The person that's passionate is going to be like, no, nah, I'm still doing this. I'm still working it out. Yeah, we messed up on this. I lost money on that. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going to figure it out. And I guarantee you, five years from now, it's going to be X, Y, and Z. You, hmm. and now everybody want to invest in the X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. So it's passion. So it's not necessary to answer your question. It's not about somebody finding a, a venture capitalist. It's about building that business enough that a venture capitalist find you. So that's the importance of it. Mm -hmm. So go through those hard times, go through those uh, those ups and downs, those mm -hmm. trials and errors, because that's good. That gives you depth. That gives you creativity. It allows you to to be a real boss. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A boss is not about making money and oh X Y and Z. No, that's that's the when you start making money, it's gonna get boring. The hard times, the rough times, is gonna make you shine mm -hmm. as bright as these lights. So that's what would be my advice for someone who is looking for a. a of venture capitalism. Make the venture capitalists look for you. I, 
That's funny you said that. I think, um, I can't remember what interview. Um, okay, so my dream interview is Nathan Pell. You're here. I'm just kidding. I'm in the building. It's, 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 it, okay, it's really 50 Cent, but I thought that would be- Ah, really uh, we're okay. close enough. All right, yeah, you really are. <laughs> but um, he I'm said something like that. <laughs> He says he 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 makes um, a point similar to what you just made. So um, okay, so besides being in that space, you're also an author. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna read this because I don't want to get it wrong. On a positive note, ten steps to a positive mindset. That's me. Every day. Is That's that you me. Every, day? every single day, and if it's not, I'm trying. Okay. So, how does the positive mindset? Um, show up for you, say, in work, in business? I mean, first of all, it shows up in work, business, because, I mean, the amount of negativity that's out here in the world, the amount of negativity that is fed to people, the amount of ne negativity that individuals are in every single day, they don't even know it. They're involved in negativity, they don't even know it by what they say, by what they do. My life changed when I started to have a positive mindset. And I had to have a positive mindset because there was a point in my life when I wanted to commit suicide. This was in mm -hmm. 2010. Mm -hmm. Literally, I wanted to jump off mm -hmm. a bridge in North Hollywood right next to Universal Studios. You know where Universal Studios is? Yes. Right there by Toluca Lake? Yes. That little bridge over there, that little waterway? I was going to jump off of that one, um, um, at one point in my life. And I picked up a book and I started huh. reading and that changed my life. And not only I had that, th I didn't pick up that book. I picked up this book called, um, anyway, I picked up this book and I started to read. And I realized that reading allowed me to surpass my problems. And that's why I became a, 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 a aggressive reader. I re I've read, up to this day, I've read over 2,000, 2006 books. Up are to you, the, are I, you still, do you I, still read a lot? I read, what? It changed my life. My yeah. life changed when I started reading books. I am so serious, man. So, really? yeah, so that's why, that's why I decided to write a book on positivity because positivity gets you out of those dark spots. And the sections that I'm in when I'm in the bookstore is the business sections, mm -hmm. um, the self-help sections. Uh -huh. um, I'm constantly, and now I'm just reading all type of books on all different type of creativity and yeah. different worlds. And so I'm in all sections. Can I, can I ask what got you to that point? Like where you didn't, like you would really think about like, forget tomorrow. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't think I can get past today. Like, what what would make you get to that point? Thinking small. You know, I approached pro thinking small. I started making problems bigger than me. I started making th certain situations bigger than me. I started making things bigger than me. Things. Mm -hmm. Things bigger than me. Situations bigger than me. Mm -hmm. Now I approach situations. I'm bigger than everything that I, I see now mm -hmm. so when you make things bigger than you depression kicks in mm -hmm. when things don't go your way um you, you're mad at yourself you start beating yourself up mm -hmm. your mind is your mind is so malleable even in the state of, even as a wise individual your mind is so malleable so your mind starts to get addicted to those thoughts and the mm -hmm. thing is that the mind is an addiction addictive mind mm -hmm. so you get addictive to bad thoughts but mm -hmm. you get addictive mm -hmm. to negative situations if you look around, everything in our phones is negative, negative. People are addicted. You put anything negative out there, people are going to be addicted to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they want to see people fighting and beating each other up. For what? Why do you want to see another person hurt themselves, hurt mm -hmm. another individual? Mm -hmm. People are addicted to that. Their mind's been conditioned for that. So if we condition people's minds to be positive, mm -hmm. to be on a positive note, mm -hmm. to have a great mindset, to enjoy the day, it's no nothing spreads more than positivity. I'm telling you that right now. With a, with a, with a, with a, happiness is... Is, is, is a very addictive um, place. Mm -hmm. it, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a choice. Happiness is an addictive choice. Make that choice to be happy. Make that choice to see the light instead of the dark. Most people are, oh man, things are bad. Da, da, da. No, it's not. It's good. You, you're able to say things are bad. You know how many people I know that can't say it? You know how many funerals I went to last year? Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you alive. Right. We got to live. Right. So get over it. We bigger than every situation. These situations is planned in front of us. We're, we're, we're and temporary. And temporary. Temp. Mm -hmm. Temp situations. Mm -hmm. Come on. So. So if there were, um, and you probably already have done it, if there were, you know, a, 
a piece of advice that you would give to someone or suggest a book to read to someone who may be feeling depressed or defeated or whatever, because whatever happened, what, it, maybe it's something from the book you wrote, what couple of pieces of advice would you give to us to, to, to create this mindset? Maybe from the book. The, um, the advice I would give to anybody who is dealing with depression, right? Mm -hmm. I've dealt with depression for many times. I battled with it, but I got over it. Mm -hmm. It starts with you. Make You have to get control of your thoughts. You have to get control of your mindset. You're still alive. Mm -hmm. take, the, make the, take the initiative to take control of your life. You know what I'm saying? And... I would the book I would recommend is literally my book on a positive note, ten steps to um, positive mindset. Mm -hmm. It's either you have people around you that's doing negative things that you need to get a, uh, away from. Mm -hmm. Either you have to practice mindfulness, right? Mm -hmm. Take a walk. I take you know I take two hour walks just to think mental 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 um, for mental health. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Two hour walks just to walk. Mm -hmm. Look around. We're constantly in cars. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Get some air. Go outside. For sure. Go outside, mm -hmm. interact with people. Mm -hmm. I used to deal with, uh, you know, like, like, like I didn't want to deal with people. You know what I mean? I'd be like, oh no, well, no. Because no. you don't like small talk. So yeah, I'm I don't like about that. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I love people, by the way. But there was a point where I just didn't want to deal with people. And when mm -hmm. things start going good, you try to keep people away. In a sense, it's so crazy because when things start to get real good, real mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. You start to be like paranoid. You get paranoid around mm -hmm. people. And I had to learn to get over that. That's part of negativity. Paranoia. Has somebody betrayed you? Oh, of course. Of course somebody well, um, betrayed me. Of course like that. I had many. I mean, and I would say. Well, that I, led to the paranoia. Yeah. Okay. That, that has. And I got over it. Okay. I got over it many years ago. But um, you have to be. You have to practice. This is real practice. The same way you practice negativity every single day. Mm -hmm. Same time, people practice negativity every single day. You have Do you to think practice people positivity. are practicing negativity? Because when you're saying it, I'm like, mm -hmm. nobody does that. But when you, but when you are saying it, mm -hmm. do you think that people don't even realize that that is indeed what they're doing? Right. Mm -hmm. It's that. That's exactly what I'm saying. And you know, to practice is just doing every day, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you looking at your phone and you looking at people punch people in the face all the time, that's negativity. True. That's, okay. That's that's straight. That's practice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you're just so good at it that you don't even know you're doing right. it. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. So that's practice. Mm -hmm. That's what, when I say, emphasize on that. That's practice. You know, like being aware. You know, I always talk about being aware. People are not aware of themselves, and they're not aware of everybody else. Like this world is there's over seven billion people in this world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we can't just focus on ourselves. You know what I mean? And the more you open up yourself, like I say, there's a quote that says, open hearts, open hearts. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The more open you are, the more available you are, the more you receive. So that's that, that would be my advice like far as like living a positive mindset. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just put, be aware. Be more aware. Open mm -hmm. up your heart. Be more aware. And... um Take the steps. It's practice. There's books that I'm reading over and over and over and over. I mean, there's a book called 48 Laws of Power. I literally just ordered that book again, and I've read it two times already. So, I, okay. You've read it twice. Mm -hmm. What are you doing after you... Why do you need to keep... Are you messy? Are you, no, you it's not, no, it's not. No, it's not that. Why do you have to keep purchasing the same book? Well, the thing is, you want to... Are you to, giving it away? Like, it means so after much... After I read a book, I give it away. Oh, you do? I always do that. Okay, so yeah, that's why that's you a have it. But sometimes you just want to, at the stage you are in life, right? When I read that book, that was like, what, six years ago? Okay. I was at a certain stage in my life. Now, where I'm at in my life now, even with the growth that I have, mm -hmm. I want to read it again. Mm -hmm. I want to see how this applies yeah. to my life right now in the state I am in. Mm -hmm. Everybody read um, Think and Grow Rich. I read mm -hmm. that book back in the day when I was like 20 years old. Mm -hmm. I've read that book four times already. Can I tell you something about that book? Every person that is that I've come across that have read had, that has read that book always said they read it again. I've mm -hmm. not come across one person that said I was one and done. Right. Everyone has read that book. Yeah, it's cool to read books over and over again. Yeah. It's, it's nothing wrong with it because it sits in your mind. It gets ingrained in you. It becomes part of you. It becomes mm -hmm. in who you are now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But sometimes we just read to read. You know, a lot of times people don't even know how to read. 
And I'm not saying read like far as read words, right? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about there's a technique to reading. You okay, have so many. Right? Yeah, sometimes we we pick up a book and we're just reading the words. All right, Tom yeah. said hi. Jane said hi back. And so they're not that's looking it. deeper than the that words. It's deeper than the deeper words. Than reading is a conversation with the author. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? For you not to like small talk is interesting that you would be such an avid reader. Yeah. For you like not to really be interested in small talk. Yeah, I'm not interested in small talk at all. I know. So it's weird like to hear how much you read. Mm-hmm. I, I have to I have to read. It's my it's mental health for me. It's it's all like I nice said. Nice little escape. Problems be this high, right? Mm-hmm. Problems, whatever it is, be this high. And since I've been reading, my pro my, my problems is still this high, mm-hmm. but I'm way above it. Mm-hmm. So I could see past problems. I see everything. There's an answer. There's if if you want something done or if you need answers for something, pick up a book. Mm-hmm. I am an advocate of reading because it saved my life. Mm-hmm. I wrote that book because I had friends that died from suicide. Not only me trying to kill myself mm-hmm. at one point in my life, mm-hmm. but I had friends that committed suicide. Well, you know, I'm glad you read the book. Yeah, of course. I had to. Mm-hmm. I had to. That's what God wanted. Mm-hmm. So I had people that pat, that was in dark places mm-hmm. that, that was like, you know what? I, you know, I grew up in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. I've seen some. I've seen some stuff. Mm-hmm. I've seen some dark energies, and I decided to choose the light. So I wrote that book for people who are dealing with things. People who want to even advance their their positive energy. I got. I come through with the positive energy. My energy's always. up. I've always. Any room I walk in, I light that joint up. People walk away be like, "Yo, who is that? Who? I don't know what it is, but something is drawing me to you." Yeah, I hear the same it's, thing. It's, so you know what it is. I, I hear I have great energy. All the time. You do have I mean, great energy. That's why we here right okay, now. I, okay. <laughs> 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 no, really, I do. But okay, so I, um, as I'm sitting here listening to how in tuned you are. I'm also thinking in the back of my mind, this dude was on Queens Court. Yes, I was. And I, do you fit the profile, or was that just a, a fluke thing? Like, when I think about a guy who I think would be on Queens Court, maybe not so well read, but mm. then you had the attorney. So I don't know. I but but I just as I'm sitting here, I'm just trying to picture you on this show. And for those of you that don't know, Queens Court is um a, was it is or was a dating show with Tamar Braxton, Evelyn Lozado, Lozada and Nivia. And Nivia I think is Little Wayne's baby mama. Mhm. Okay. She looked like the funnest one of the group. I've, she is. Was she the fun Nivia's personality okay. steroid off off the chain. Okay. She has the one of the dopest personalities that I've met for someone I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so she, I was thinking like, oh my God, that's who I would have gravitated to because she just looks like a lot of fun. And I like to laugh and have fun. Right. Um, now, she asked you out on mm. this. Day. Okay, so this was not a show I was going to watch. Right. So when you were sitting home on the first episode, I was I was happy. The whole world. Oh, yeah. There I it was because yeah. I could stop watching. Okay. Right. But so she, Nivea, with her fun ass personality, asked you out on a date. And then she decides, wait, before we get there, how did you get to Queens Court? That's what I want to know. That's how I'm trying to, how did you get there? Do they call you and be like, hey, Nathan? They, exactly. Really? It's just, it's just like that. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know what was going on, but um, we just- You were and, open? We just, at first- Adventure? Yeah, it's just, listen, I never did reality in my life. Yeah. And I was never open to reality- and you, me, I'm, I'm to myself. I don't like to be out there too much. I like to keep things private and everything like that. And I, th- I took it as a grown experience. I was like, why not? Mm-hmm. Let's learn something here. Let's learn about yourself. I think most importantly, right? Mm-hmm. Because um, do they got... tell you before who the three women are? Or you just they tell us nothing. Oh, so you literally walk in and you see Nate. Tamar, Nate. Evelyn, and right. Nivia. Did you know who all three? I wouldn't have known who Nivia was without her wording at the bottom. Did you know when you saw them who they were? Keep it real with you, and yeah. I, you know, I, I've said this. No, really, I didn't. I didn't. I don't watch TV like that. I don't watch. You know, I, I learned who they were um, from being on on you know on set. Yes, but I didn't know much about them. You know, I emphasized on that too when I was talking to the um, producer. I, was like, I don't know. 
who these are. But I knew Nivea music. That song she had oh, from back okay, in the yes. day, okay, that okay. was a smack. That yes, was a hit. Yes. So yes, I didn't know. Yes, I, I couldn't okay. put a face to it, but right. I, I didn't know nothing about those women. You know, I was just so there. So who were you just on the surface, shallow? Who were you most attracted to of the three? Um, when you first just see them. Well, the thing, you know, I think. You had to be attracted to them. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Um, when I first saw them, I just, I didn't look at it like that. Oh. I'm going to be straight up with you. I've seen so much women in my life mm -hmm. that. I don't see them for 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 the physical. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the energy. I'm looking at who how they how they are. You know what I mean? And that's that's the thing that's the most attractive to me. So me, I'm just looking at it as a blank canvas. That's how I'm looking at the situation. I'm looking at all three of them as a blank canvas. Um, Nivea's personality was dope because she was so open and so like she was like you said she's a fun individual. She she wasn't guarded. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of the, uh, they were guarded. Mm -hmm. Nivea wasn't guarded. She came out of the gate like, yo, what up? You know what I mean? And that, that's just a little bit what you saw. I mean, she was really like, she's an open book. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Was so, it too much? No, nah, it wasn't okay. too much. Because okay. I, I, like you said, I just saw what I saw. Yeah, know, nah, it wasn't too much. It was okay. actually perfect. Oh, okay. To keep it real with you, it was it was perfect. What you was know? Tamar like? Tamar, Tamar. You know what I'm saying? Tamar is actually is exactly what you see on TV. That's her. Evelyn is exactly what you see in TV. Those women are exactly who they are. They just like that. They they're cool individuals, and um, I was surprised when I went home. But I, you know, I have I have uh, I have. How I, was the date with Evelyn? What 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 went wrong? Um, I don't think anything went wrong. I Why think did she send you home? I think she didn't send me home, and that's where the confusion coming at. Oh, you got to remember because I'm confused. You got to remember. You got to remember. Uh, Nivea sent me home. Nivea said what she said and sent me home. She said whatever she said, but Nivea was never there, so I don't understand where that came from. So it is a lot of things didn't make sense to me. But at the end of the day, do you think um, Evelyn was already hooking up with the guy she's engaged with from the show? No, he, he wasn't there. He wasn't there oh. at that time. I, you know, I was the first. Oh. I was the first. You know, what I mean, you, I was part of the the first group. The first group the, yeah. Oh, so he brought in a different group. They I would know. This yeah, they brought off. They, they brought off. They brought in different. They bring. They bring in different groups oh. of uh, guys. I was part of that first group. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But no, everybody came through with a with a clean slate, man. It was a you know everybody came through with a clean slate. Did you like all the guys? Did you guys connect? I all? loved all the guys, man. Really? All the guys. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. It's a brotherhood that we built. Really? All, all the guys that I yeah 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 all the guys on there are solid individuals. Do you guys keep in contact? Yes, with them? yes, really? yes. All the guys on there, like I'm telling you, like th that was a brotherhood on there. Like it was a, uh, it was, it was really, it was, it was really grown man business. Everybody was is love over there. Everybody is love. Everybody, everything was dope. Those guys are good individuals. Every single one of them. I don't have nothing bad well, to say about Well, you know anything. who I think is the most patient of them. Who? I know you wrote the book on this positive mindset stuff, but. That the the guy that Tamar is um, engaged who, who to who Jr. Jr. Yeah, Jr. Solid. He has to be the most patient individual because <laughs> this fucking book you need to send to him. Okay, positive he, mindset. Okay, yeah. Because poor little Jr. is gonna need all the patience he can get. He got okay? the patience. He got well, the patience. Well, well, good because he she she's a lot. I think she is a lot on a daily. Doesn't mean I don't like her, but in a relationship. I probably would be, I don't know, on meds. I don't know. I don't, I don't know day to day how I would do. Like Tamar seems like a situation ship. Doesn't that mean like you only have to see him every now and then, like not daily? Whatever it means to date somebody and you don't have to see him every day. Mm. So whether she dating somebody else and you only have to worry about lunchtime, I don't know. But a day to day, all day, 24 hours a day, God bless. God bless Jr. God bless Jr. God bless Jr. Okay, so you end up going home. How did you feel? Like, were you like shocked at dinner? Like, and did you guys really eat? Was that real dinner? Did you really eat that, or is it was that set up? Mm, everything was real. Like, if we was eating, we was eating. If we was drinking, we was drinking. You um, know what I'm saying? Like, okay. yeah, yeah. Everything was like everything was authentic. Everything was a, a hundred. Okay. Um, far as what you were saying about yeah. So are you shocked? Like, wait, where is this coming from? I was shocked. But in a sense, I, w I was shocked, but I wasn't surprised in a sense. Um, I had an idea where it could have, I, you know, I, I, I was shocked, but I wasn't like, I mean, you could tell by my, you could tell from, you know, I, like I said, uh, I'm bigger than, every, bigger than everything than um, 
bigger than everything yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, meaning... It, it was done for you and not to yeah, you. Yeah, like it was like, cool. I'm not I'm not tripping, you know what I mean? Because it's like, I already made my choice too. You see what I'm saying? Like, Oh, what was your choice? Meaning I already made my choice. Like I, like I said, I approached the situation with an open canvas, Whatever like a, a, a clean, yeah, a clean okay. slate. I'm not looking at, like I said, I don't know who anybody is. And even if I did, it, it didn't matter to me. You know, I'm in LA, I've dated everybody, everything. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So... And when I say everything, meaning like I, I dated everybody, I was here to here, yeah. here to here, here yes. to here. Yes. The X, Y, and Zs. Yes. The, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. it's not a big deal to me. Yeah. My situation was like, I think they, it was just time consuming, right? I knew that my time was valuable, which I emphasized earlier, mm -hmm. right? I knew right then and there what I wanted, and they knew right then and there what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's not... I'm not for everybody and everybody's Correct. not for me. Correct. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I made my choice yeah. and they made my choice. So that's why even when I left, when you see me leave the show, I'm like, cool. Right. I'm, it's not a big deal. I go back right. to my life and life goes on. It is what it is. But did you really have a fun time on that date? I had uh, with talking about, um, yeah, with Evelyn, yes, yes. I had a great time on it because it was like talking to a homie with her. I, and I think we, we don't meet a lot of people from the Bronx who, oh, that's yeah, we both right. the, you guys had that in common. Right, we're both from the Bronx. That's so right. talking to her was like talking to the family. It was like mm -hmm. talking to somebody I knew already. Mm -hmm. It was like somebody I went to high school with or something right. like that. So it was love. It was like automatic. It was like we already know how to speak the language already. Right. And we already know the code already. So that, that was automatic for um, us to, to connect. So it was wonderful um, dating Evelyn on that show. Uh, I liked it. It was great. Okay, when was that show taped? Uh, that show was taped. It was uh, last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And then, and you guys, the guys have kept in. I think that is so cool that you guys built some sort of brotherhood. Yeah, man. Those guys were. Those are mature. The the ones that I've met. Those are some mature men. I mean, you got Puff. You got Jr. You got Mac. You got Gatsby. You know what I mean? You got my uh, myself and all the other and the two. It was like two other dudes, but those yeah. dudes was some. Those are grown men. Those are men who you know what I mean. Like, and especially when you when men are men, mm -hmm. men could could build with each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially remember they picked everybody who's at the top of the game in their world. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? In their space, mm -hmm. so they've seen a lot. Mm -hmm. The men that they chose seen a lot. And they know how to interact with people. It goes back to what you were saying earlier. Like when you meet somebody and they're like, ah, 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 ah. those you know that's immaturity, and you know that person is green. They haven't been around the block. Mm -hmm. Those men, they've been around the block. They at the top of the game in their world. You know what I mean? You got some of the best lawyers. You got some of the best entrepreneurs. You got some of the best men in branding. You got the, you know what I mean? I'm at the top of my game in, in venture capital. You know what I'm saying? You have the best men, so they know how to interact with each other mm -hmm. and everybody know how to communicate with each other it's, it's not a competition mm -hmm. we know at the end of the day it's going to end up the way that it ends up mm -hmm. so you can't force anything mm -hmm. it's just going to go the way it goes mm -hmm. so that's why at the end of the day we built our relationship our friendship and at the end of the day everybody chose who they chose and that's the way it's going to go that's that's how i look at it that's mm -hmm. my perspective but when i started that show it was, it was no no i didn't see it wasn't no comp and nothing like that it was just love would you do reality again? I would do reality again on my terms. What are your terms? My Meaning that I would have some type of control in the situation. See, the thing about reality... What, you would be Evelyn, Tamar, or Nivea? Um, it's either that... Either that or, you know, I bring the show idea. I bring the concept. Okay. I bring the whole thing. We set up so the whole produce. thing. Yeah, produce mm -hmm. it. And if I'm in it, I'm in it. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't do it on somebody else's terms. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I like out of that control. And me, I'm a, I am like control. So I can see that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, so I like control. Should, I wish you would have asked it as a question. Like, do you think I enjoy concern? I mean, control or not? So I could answer because okay. now, just because I said I could see that, you don't really know if I really was thinking that or not. Okay, do you know what I mean? I got you. But I just want you to know, I was already. I had already peeped that. You already peeped that. I did. So you okay? Yeah. 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 So um, I would do it on my terms. Yeah. You know, I would do it on my terms and do it. I'm open to reality. I'm not gonna yes. lie. I mean, that was some of the most fun times on set mm -hmm. i had some really good time because you learn about yourself mm -hmm. you learn did about you like like when you went back to, did you watch at least your episode i did okay so did you like how you presented on that episode 
Well, the or thing is critical, you know, of just the, how we are of, our, of, our, of you know, ourselves. Well, that's a good question. Um, when I saw the show, I'm just like, OK, that's the way they that's the way they edit it. I can't, oh, you know, I mean, they mm-hmm. they they gotta sell a show, right? Right. They gotta create these characters and stuff like that. They have to create these yeah. narratives, mm-hmm. and they have to use what they have. Mm-hmm. So when I saw the show, they were just like, oh, like I, I got into an argument with one of the gentlemen, right? Mm-hmm. And the argument wasn't uh, an argument; it was just setting boundaries, yes. right? Because sometimes we start, we meet people. And we come off as passive, right? Mm-hmm. I, like I said, I'm a grown man. I'm, I'm I'm controlling a lot of things. I don't have time for the small or the play play. Mm-hmm. I'm not that type of individual. And I feel like you you set those boundaries mm-hmm. so that people don't waste your time. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. sometimes people come into situations pretending to be somebody like, hey, and throw a little joke here or a little jab there. And sometimes you might laugh it off like, Haha, you just called me that. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, listen, I don't like to, don't. Don't cross those lines mm-hmm, mm-hmm. respectfully. Mm-hmm. Don't cross those lines. I respect your space. You respect my space. And we don't have to pretend in a space where it's not pretend. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, the way they cut it, they made it seem a certain situation. Yeah. But it wasn't no situation. It was just okay. a conversation. Okay. You get what I'm and saying? And he was receptive. Right. To what you were saying. Right. And we, like I said, it was a it was a it was a conversation. And sometimes mm-hmm. people don't have the heart to even have the to 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 let people know that there's borders there. There's not to cross those lines. Mm-hmm. People don't have the heart. People uh okay, cool. I think do you think women have a harder time with that than men? Uh, I'm not a woman, so I don't know. I you should, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you, I'm let you answer have, that question. Well, no, I mean just in dealing, like whether it, when you come across them in business and the personal. I mean, it's not like you're 18. I mean, you've right. had relationships or whatever. Like just or fr- women that are friends. Do you do you think? Well, I'll just say this. You know, you know, I, I will answer it. I think women do have a harder time setting boundaries mm. than men. Okay. You know. Um, I do think that. So that was just my question. Whether it's in business or dating, I think that we kind of fall back for a second. Mm-hmm. I don't think we stay back. But I think that we spend a lot of time observing and then deciding how we're going to move. And someone could interpret that as, oh, I can just do whatever I want to do. You know what I mean? Mm. Instead of, oh, shit. She's, you know, we're watching. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think, I think women are, I mean, men are very like, I think women take their time to assess the situation. Mm. You know, I've seen both sides of the coin with that. You know what I mean? I I was, I break it down into as just people. You know what I mean? Like, people are not trained to, to, as a collective to 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 know that they even have boundaries sometimes you know what i mean i've seen both sides of the coin where um I, the women in my lives they set their boundaries they mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's like listen this is what it is 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 you know what i'm saying and i think it's more of a of awareness to it mm-hmm. you know what i mean setting the tone mm-hmm. i like to say that set the tone yeah Set the tone. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know what I mean? Say what's on your mind. This goes for guy or girl. Mm-hmm. Say what's on your mind. Set the tone. Don't waste time because life is too short. A mm-hmm. hundred years go by like this. Mm-hmm. And a hundred a hundred years could go by even faster by you not setting boundaries, mm-hmm. setting the tone. Mm-hmm. And that's my advice to individuals. Set the tone. Mm-hmm. You know? So you seem to be very clear about your life, your path what you like, what you don't like, where do you see yourself like in five years with all this information that you now have about who you are mm-hmm. and where you are? Like, where where does that leave you in five years? Like, do you have are, do you have kids? No. Okay. Where does that leave you in five years? Well, eventually I want to have a family. Okay. I want to have a family, and I see myself being a family man. Mm-hmm. I see myself building an empire. Right, and not an empire where I'm gonna gratify, um, ha- t- t- reap from it. I think an empire where, um, my family, my friends, my mm-hmm. peers, people I interact constantly, um, with will, um, reap for it. Mm-hmm. Constantly changing people's lives. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a big advocate of that. You know, what I mean, I want to be helpful to this world. I realize I'm, a, I'm part of a collective, right? Mm-hmm. And I want to make sure I'm doing my part and what God has me here for. 
Mm-hmm. And I want to make sure that I'm doing I'm doing everything that he wants me to. That's what I see myself in five years. So I see myself, number one, being alive, mm-hmm. healthy. Mm-hmm. That's important to me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I want to have a family. Mm-hmm. Um, I see myself, like I said, building an empire. Mm-hmm. And, and not only, and like I said, the empire is not f- solely focused on money. It's not about money. I think at a certain, after a certain point in life, it's not about money anymore. It's about mm-hmm. the impact that you're leaving mm-hmm. on people. And I want to be there... Even if you have a question, I want to be be able to answer it. You know what I'm saying? You know how many people I ask questions for? I ask questions and they can't even answer me. Mm. They can't give me no advice. Mm. You know how horrible that feels to like ask somebody for advice and not get advice? Be like, I don't know. I think sometimes people... Um, okay, so this is what I tell my girlfriends. I don't think that... Certain, certain people, you don't need their advice. Because mm-hmm. They haven't been through what you're going through or they're just getting advice that they saw on Instagram. So, for instance, if you are a married woman, you, to me, you don't go to a single woman who's never been married and never seems to be able to establish any real long-term relationships. You don't go to her expecting advice. Now, you may want to go to her and vent, but who, who cares what her advice would be to you, just in real life? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I would never... I, I mean, but I keep all my stuff pretty close. There are people I go to to just like discuss thing, discuss things. I don't know if I'm really looking for answers rather than I need you to hear me. You know what I mean? Maybe mm. they can maybe they can provide support and answers to my personal mental health. But in terms of what I'm doing, probably not. You know what I mean? So I think it's important to know where you're going looking for information. Absolutely. I think you should you know? I think individuals should be aware of that, right? Yeah. Because there's so much information out there. Mm-hmm. There's so much information out there. I mean, you could be led up a rabbit hole, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think far as like when you're asking questions, I think it's always good to keep an open mind, right? Because mm-hmm. me, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a data junkie i love to like talk to people ask questions Mm -hmm. i like to just absorb information Mm -hmm. not saying i'm going to use the information i just like to see what people's mindsets is that i just see i just like seeing what comes out of your mouth (laughs) you know what i'm saying right and i'm not going to judge anybody from it but i just want to learn who you are and 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 if it's something like personal 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 you know i mean far as like when it comes to like relationship advice or anything like that. I don't really ask questions on those things because you got a book. every to each their own. Right. <laughs> right. Right. We got the book out. You know what I'm saying? And, I, you know, I always tell entrepreneurs, if they want to do business with me, first you got to read my book. Because I got to make sure you you approaching me with the Wait, best is there energy. A quiz? Is there a quiz? It's not a quiz. I could just tell based on energy. I mean, you got to have good energy when you're approaching situations. <laughs> like, well, if I had a book and I told somebody to read it, there would be some sort of little quiz. Like, I would say something like crazy. Like, you remember when I said... Uh, the, it the, the, it's a full moon uh, right. uh, five days of the week. You remember when I said that? And if they said, yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah. I love when you said that. I, I thought you were right on. Then you know, okay, this is bullshit. Right. You can keep it going like, oh, yeah, da, 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 and go to the next. But just my mental note would be like, this person's full of shit. Right. Hey, but, you know, in, and that's a good, that's actually a good way to do it. But I'm going to tell you <laughs> I'm straight I'm real up. smart. Okay? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you may I not see be able that. to tell. <laughs> I'm real smart. I could tell that. Okay. I could see it. But um, I could tell based on people's energies. I'm yeah. going to tell you straight up. And I could tell, like, when people read my book, yeah, it changes their lives. Is there anything, the book is out. Uh-huh. It's been out since January. Is there anything now when you go back like, ugh, I should have added that or I would like to change that? My, my way of thinking has changed since I've published that book? No, not right now. No. Okay. I went over it a multiple number of times yeah. to, to do that, but um, not right now. We'll see five years from now. Okay. You know what I mean? As I grow, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, but like I said, back to what, what I was saying, I was like, I could tell when somebody read it or not because it really changes their lives, like, mm-hmm. like really changes their lives. And that's just, that book is an extension of me. Like if we hang out with each other, yeah. if I hang out with anybody, their lives change for the greater. You know what I'm saying? So if they picked up that book, I could just tell. I could just look at them. There's, there's no running around. There's no skipping. <laughs> okay. So where can they find the book? Oh, the book is on Amazon. It's on okay. Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Wait, I want it. what is the title again? On a positive note, 10 steps to a positive mindset. So they can get it anywhere. Anywhere. No, ex- no excuses. No excuses. Okay. And how much is this book? Um, nineteen ninety nine. Okay. Oh, I, you know, see how you said that? It's like... Just a drop in the bucket. It's not Easy. much. I love how you said that. Yeah. Instead of 
19, you know, you didn't pause, you just went right for 1999. People like, be doing that, judging their pockets. <laughs> they be judging their own pockets. <laughs> look, look, I learned people, when people do that, they judging their own pockets. They like, ah, I don't got it like that. Yo, my book is uh, 1999. <laughs> So everybody is on Amazon. I know this because I'm always on Amazon. So you can find the book. You need to get it. You need to read it because it's going to change your life. Mm -hmm. It's going to change that energy. If you walk around here with some negative bad energy, says Nathan, correct? Nathan Pell. Okay. Oh, excuse me, Nathan Pell. And what? where can they find you? I'm, on, I'm everywhere, man. Just say it three times in the mirror. I pull up. Whoa. Nah. Whoa. 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 <laughs> Say it three times. Y'all be That's careful. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, you can find me on Instagram at? My, um, at Nathan Pell. Everything is Nathan Pell on Twitter. Were you able to get your whole name like that? Yeah, I, call, I, I, I snatched I snatched up my Instagram back in the day. I got mine early. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. At Nathan so, Pell. Pell, and he doesn't spell pale like the Grant. His pale is spelled P E L L E. Okay, because Pell Grant is P E L L. Oh yeah. So really. If y'all wanted us to pronounce it right, because I was pronouncing it wrong, it should have been spelled P E L L. But you guys added that E to be yeah, fancy. Yeah, we, yeah, okay. yeah, we, the E, so the e is silent. Pele. Yeah, it, yeah. But it's Pell. Yeah. P E L L. You can find this book on Amazon, wherever. It is everywhere. It's only $19.99, so you should get it. And he is on all social media. Nathan is on all social media at Nathan Pell, correct? Your yes, Facebook? at Nathan Pell on Facebook, Nathan Pell. Twitter. I'm 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 in love with Twitter right now. So Why? I'm in you. Is it I thought Twitter was gone. I thought so too until I started using it. Okay. So are you gonna be one of those I, I have a blue check mark, like mm -hmm. really? Mm -hmm. But are you gonna be a person that buys the blue check mark? You know, I'm not big on buying things. I don't like to buy anything at all. No small talk and cheap. No well not I'm not cheap at all, but okay. um um, far as like, like I don't like to be sold on things. So basically, like especially what's happening right now with the with the, I'd rather earn my yeah. earn mines right yeah. now. Um, I don't like to be sold. So if somebody offered me something like, hey, I'm going to sell you this blue check, I don't, I'm like, no, I don't. I'm not going to pay for mine. Yeah, so I'm not. Yeah, I'm cool on that. It. Yeah, if you're going to take it. You yeah, I'd rather just yeah. like I'm putting in work. I'm out here working. So yeah. it's like I'm already verified in these streets yeah. Ooh, for real. That. You know what I'm oh, saying? For real. Yeah, like for real, for real. Well, so when I get back out in these streets after these podcasts today, I'm walking around saying Nathan Pell. <laughs> Nathan Pell. <laughs> Nathan Pell. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be, like, yeah, I got the book or whatever. So, all right. I have one more two more questions to ask you. If you could work with anybody, mm -hmm. who would you work with? Like, could you also have done some stuff in acting and yes. whatever or another author or publisher? Who would it be? If you could work with anyone. If I could work with somebody. Yeah. If I could work with somebody yeah. right now. It could be in venture, your venture. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. As an artist, I, well, I got three. I got, I, got, I got two or three. All right. So if I could work with somebody as an artist, right? Yes. As a creative. Yeah. I would want to work with Adam Sandler. I think Adam Sandler is one of the coolest, okay. most creative, and most authentic individuals I've seen. Okay. Very good. And I like the way he runs his business. Okay. Happy Madison? Happy Madison. I love okay. the way he does that. And I love his family um, collective. His thing is ran like a family. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. True. So okay. I would say Adam Sandler, he just seemed like a cool dude. As a creative, I would okay. like to like be improv with him and just say, okay. yo, let's go. All right. All right. As far as in business now, um, I would like to work with uh, Dan Gote. In Africa, who what, I don't know. Um, he's a successful businessman out in what um, part of Africa? I'm um, in Nigeria. Okay, I would like to work with him. You know, what I mean, I'm I'm big on the the push on Africa. Uh, I'm in love with Africa. Um, Are you gonna invest? I'm I'm already invested in Africa. I'm already oh, invested. Silly yeah, girl. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. We, okay. Yeah. So we have telephone. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, stuff going on out there. Okay. Yeah. So you know the little you know the satellites that gives you the, the cell phone connections. Yes. Yeah, we're setting those up out there. Oh, yeah. all over. All well, Nigeria? not right on West Africa right now, not okay. in Nigeria right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. um, who else? Um, now, f who else I would have worked with? Like far as like, uh, that's two. Was that two? Yep, yeah, two. Let me see if I got one more off the top comes off the top of my head. I don't think it's going to come off the top of your head because it would already be there, right? Yeah. Well, I'm doing it right now. I'm working with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm patient. 
Yeah. Take your yeah. time. We in the building. Well, we in the building. <laughs> I just said that was number three. <laughs> that was number three. Oh, that went over the head. <laughs> yeah, yes. And I, I just sat here and told you how smart I am. Yeah, it went over my head. It went over the head. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Lastly, fast five. Don't be taking a long time to think. Okay. Hey, sometimes it takes time to think. I know, I know. Sometime I don't want it, you to do that. Sometimes it takes live. time. We're going to live. We're about to live. My friend, Real fast. it takes time. <laughs> okay. Everything. I'm going to ask you five questions. All right. All right. Favorite restaurant here in L.A.? I can't tell you. Everybody's going to go there. Then give me a pretend uh, one. Okay. Yeah. A, a pretend one? Yeah. See, too many. This is taking too long see. already. Okay, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, I hold thought you'd like to let share me, let me, information. Let, okay, I, okay, I got you. I got you. Just give me one second. Let me, I got to make let this. Let me think. Yeah, let me think. Uh, my favorite restaurant out here. All right. Okay. You're full of my, shit. All right. My okay. favorite restaurant, I don't wanna, I don't Jerry's I Deli. Okay, so that's some bullshit. Let's go to I the like bullshit. the matzo ball soup there. Are you kidding me? That is not a favorite. That's my favorite. No, you asked me my favorite. No, it, it's not. I know that's some All bullshit. other restaurants is all right. Okay. What was the last thing you listened to today, like on your way here? Um, like on your radio? Was it a podcast, music, what? what? What are we listening to? Um, I was just listening to Bossa Nova music. Okay. Um, best activity for a date night if you ever in life have one? Taking a walk. God, you're a big walker. Okay. Um, do you, Are you into sports? Formula One racing. Lewis Hamilton, is that his name? Yeah. That's all I know. Yeah, is he yeah. good? Yeah, he's really good. Okay, so you are don't care about the NBA I don't care about basketball, football. I don't care about none of that stuff. I don't, <laughs> watch, I don't watch those type of Enough. sports. I don't, yeah. Okay. Formula One. All right. Um, so who's your favorite Formula One driver? Is you that a good question? You just named him. Lewis Hamilton? Yeah, that's one of them. That's one of them. Okay. That's one of them. Um, Oh, what? Oh, God. You're going to think too long. Please don't think long. I'm going to think long. You okay. just you just manifested what? that. <laughs> what, what do you value most, loyalty or honesty? I got it all over my body tattooed. Loyalty. It goes hand to hand with honesty, too. Um, but loyalty. What do you mean you have it all over? I'm just I curious. have it tatted yeah, all over. I have loyalty tatted in like three different parts of my body. Are you yeah, really? I'm big on. I'm a Scorpio. So, you know, Scorpio is big on loyalty. Oh, yeah. no, I don't. I don't know anything. I'm a Taurus. Uh, oh, what does uh, that mean? That means you're big on loyalty too. Oh, I am very loyal. Yeah. To a to a fault. Yeah. Um loyalty right. is huge because it's rare. And loyalty is not a word, it's a it's a lifestyle, it's a choice, mm -hmm. and it's something that it's a lot of people don't have it because mm -hmm. they're not conditioned on that. And I think situations, you know, coming up the way I came up, you had to have loyalty. You have to it, trust was everything that we had. If you didn't have a trust, then we either I've seen people get killed because they didn't have trust. I've right. seen people get I've seen families get broken apart because of that. Yeah. Um. So I would say loyalty is the number one thing when interacting with people. You you show me your loyalty, you got me forever. I'm big on loyalty. Keep okay. your word. Keep your keep say who you are, mm -hmm. and you know no no backstabbing over here. Everything is all positive over here. Oh, so that's just us. This is a perfect place because right now you and I have forever. Mm -hmm. Get it? Like this is our that, forever. Like there it is. Boom. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Nathan. I really appreciate the conversation. It was a lot of fun. Yes. Um, and for you guys watching at home, uh, watching at home or on your or or walking, somebody could be taking a, a two mile walk. Uh, or sitting on the toilet. <laughs> or sitting on the toilet. So whether you you decided to watch us on YouTube, uh, thank you. If you are listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, I appreciate that too. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye.